días, mis amigos. All right, so this uh, gentleman from Line by Line Bible Studies is going to be reading and responding to a comment that I left on a previous video, and then I'm going to respond to his response. Dogmatic about it. When Satan is let loose, we that are saved are up in the air. Oh, is that rapture? That's not true. I, when Satan is let loose, we are not up in the air. Uh, Satan's going to make war with the saints. He will make war with the saints and overcome them. All right, so that that right there is wildly incorrect and on, on many levels. Okay, so first of all, when he says um, that Satan will make war with the saints and overcome them, that's from Revelation 13. All right, that's from Revelation 13. And this is talking about the beast. If I, I wonder sometimes people even read the Bible, but uh, let me start here. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw the beast, the beast. Uh, I saw a beast, I'm sorry, a beast. Now, of course, it's important to understand, in my opinion, that the beast of Revelation is the fourth beast of Daniel. Right. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his ten upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Um, years ago I wrote a song uh, on this right here, uh, using nearly the same lyrics, or the same, you know, the same words as what we read here for lyrics. Uh, it's interesting to me because it's the dragon, which is Satan, that old serpent called the Satan and the devil and the dragon gave the beast his power his seat and great authority okay <laughs> and the beast of course is the Roman Empire and today that Roman Empire has transitioned into the Roman Catholic Church Okay, so here in verse 3 when, I, when it says, And I saw one of the, his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. This is talking about the Roman Empire. It can't be talking about anything else. It's not possible. Because Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world. And he names the first three beasts. The Babylonian Empire the Medes and Persian, the Greek Empire, and we know that the Romans are in charge when we get to the New Testament, uh, specifically Luke chapter 2, verse 1, when it says Caesar decreed that the whole world should be taxed. We now know that the Roman Empire was in place in the New Testament, and therefore we have to be in that fourth empire right now there's no other possibility because the after that is the is the um, the kingdom of uh, everlasting life which is what we're putting our hope into which is coming when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and he destroys this world forever all right that's when the fifth kingdom comes in all right, so you can't, there's no wiggle room here. You can be ignorant, for sure. But when it's a matter of the truth, you can't bend the truth any other way. This beast of Revelation has to be the fourth beast of Daniel. All right, and the wound, that the deadly wound that was healed is the transition from the physical empire into the spiritual empire known today as the Roman Catholic Church and they have power over all the kings of the earth and um, so let's continue here 
and all the world wondered after the beast and they worship the dragon see they they're a bunch of Satan worshipers and people call it um, you know the sun worshipers and all this and that and the pagan they adopted pagan uh, customs and all that sort of thing and that's all true and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worship the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him it's interesting because the Roman Catholic Church is extended all throughout the world on every corner of the earth all right they're in every country in the world they claim over 1 billion followers by by and large by by far the single biggest religion in the world today and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months and he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship respect honor him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world so and here here we live in a, a time where people aren't realizing that the Pope is the Antichrist it's amazing and if you don't recognize him as the Antichrist then you're showing him way too much respect there's nothing in the Bible at all to support this idea of a Pope Pope means Holy Father and Jesus plainly says call no man on earth your father now I know I know Catholics got a response for everything but it, just because they respond to something doesn't mean there's any logic behind what they say right. now <laughs> I don't want to get into that it's it's too stupid all right and, I, and the Bible even tells us get out of her my people get out of that Catholic Church Catholic Church won't save anybody and it only hinders people and only prevents people from entering in okay so anyways I don't want to get into that the, the, but the bottom line the point that I'm making here is that Revelation 13 which is talking about making war with the Saints it's talking about the beast all right it's not talking about Satan all right, so his argument against Satan is going to make war with the saints and overcome them. So this is quite different. Quite different from what we're reading in Revelation 20. Quite different. Now, okay, in Revelation 20, the context is the end of the world. Revelation 13, That's the context is what's happening right now leading up to the end of the world uh, I mean do I have to explain it any more than that I, I just wonder sometimes people even read the Bible they're basing their doctrine off of what other men have taught them and they're disregarding the Bible the plainly written Word of God it's incredible now, I, I have hope for this gentleman here. I do. I have hope for him. Now, in Revelation chapter 20, when it says, oh, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, this is the end of the world. At the end of the thousand years, this is the end of the world. All right? And when this happens at the end of the world, I mean, this is consistent all, all throughout the Bible. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. And none of these nations are saved people. All the saved people are lifted up. There's countless other verses to support that. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. This is unquestionably the end of the world. 
And unquestionably, without a doubt, we are up in the air. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. The beloved city has to be up in the air. It has to be. There's no other possibility. In John 14, Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Alright. In Galatians chapter 4, it even tells us very plainly, Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of of us all. Jerusalem is above. The holy city of God, the place where Jesus went to prepare a place for us in his father's house and his father's um, it, it, in his father's house are many mansions. It, this is he's going up. The city of God is in heaven. No question about it. So in Revelation 20 in Revelation 20 when it says they compass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. It's up. That's above, and we get this prophecy all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. All right, all right. I mean, <laughs> I I don't know how people miss it. I really don't. You go to Genesis three verse fifteen, when the Lord said to the serpent, "I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed; it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel." He's going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent. Are you with Christ, or are you with the serpent? If you're with Christ, you're up with Christ. You're up in the air with Christ. You think about Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when it says Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and we are lifted up into the air. 1 Thessalonians 4 it says, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Thessalonians 4 says that um, something, it says something, believe, I think it does, anyway. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. When Jesus comes, we are lifted up. That's the rapture. Right. What are you saying? There's no rapture? And that's ridiculous. You watch too many Hollywood movies, buddy. That's all I can say. Well, what can I say, man? You've been fooled? Are you going to listen to me, or are you going to Listen to those perverts in Hollywood. It's your choice, man. It really is. I mean, you don't even have to listen to me. Just what's the Bible say? <laughs> really? What's the Bible say? And it's very clear. Very, very clear. So let's go to let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter one. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm not sure what I'm reading here. Let's see. Um, Which is manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe in that day that day is when he comes in the cloud. This is consistent from Genesis to Revelation. 
Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up, and our enemy is gathered at our feet and destroyed. All right, think about this. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Right? And this is consistent all throughout the Bible. Again, 2 Peter chapter 3, very clearly, very plainly, says that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat in the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up into the air, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. Just as it was in the days of Noah when God destroyed the world by water, so also in the coming of the Son of Man will this world be destroyed by fire. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. It's talking about the same, same thing, same event. Same thing, same event. So in Revelation 20, when this happens, we're not going to be on the earth. The beloved city is not on the earth. You think we're going to be? You think you're going to be on the earth? You're in the wrong place, Jack. Because fire is going to come down from God and devour all that are on the earth. Consider this. I mean, just consider this. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devour them. You can't be on the earth. If you're on the earth, you're going to be burned up. You're going to be burned up. The earth also, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Oh, but you're, you're still going to say you're on the earth? Buddy, you're in trouble. Big trouble. You don't want to be on the earth when that happens. You want to be up in the air with the Lord when he comes in the clouds of heaven. And to properly understand this, you've got to know that. I mean, it, it's it's <laughs> it's beyond obvious. For those with eyes open, it's beyond obvious. When Jesus comes, it's the end of the world. And at the end of the world, this world is going to be destroyed by fire. This There's just no wiggle room. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. And you be as ignorant as you want to. That's on you. Okay. Uh, the the final saints that have to be killed. The idea that the saints won't be here, as far as I'm concerned, is one of those things I am pretty dogmatic about. The rapture is a lie. The idea that we'll be up in there now when the rapture is a lie. So Jesus lied when he said he'll send his angels to gather together the elect. All right, 1 Thessalonians 4. That lie, that's a lie. Paul lied, right? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet. That's a, that's a lie. That's not true, that's a lie. Things I am pretty dogmatic about, the rapture's a lie. The rapture's a lie. This 1 Thessalonians 4, when it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air. That, that's a lie. I'm pretty dogmatic about that. That's a lie. Boy, you're in trouble. The idea that we'll be up in there. Now, when the wrath is come, when God lets loose, when Jesus lets loose, we will be up in the air. Ah, nice, nice 180 right there, buddy. Nice... Nice 180. Nice 180. What do you think this is talking about? What do you think the rapture is? I don't know what you're talking about, man. Are you basing this? I, I don't know. I seriously, seriously do not know. Is this idea that all oh, the rapture won't happen? 
That's a liar. You must be watching a movie. Because I don't know what you're talking about. I know what the Bible says. The only thing I can imagine is that I've heard of this Left Behind movie. And I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, the pro I, you know, I, the, from what I understand, the problem that I have with it is this idea that there will be people living after Jesus returns. I got a problem with that because that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is great and terrible day of the Lord. That's when fire comes down from God and devours everybody, and it's right here in Second Peter three. It's all from Genesis to Revelation. So this idea, the Hollywood movie that hey. You get a second chance. That's not in the Bible. I, I agree with you. You don't get a second chance. Well, why, why are you claiming the rapture's a lie? You don't get a second chance. That's a lie. I get that. I'm with you all the way. Why would you claim the rapture's a lie? Well, because I hear a bunch of people say it, and I just repeat what I hear a bunch of people say. That, I mean, that's all, that's, all, that's all they're doing. They're echoing what other people have said, and they're buying into it, even though it's contrary to to what the Bible says. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. See, and we're raptured up, right? We're lifted up in the air to meet the Lord in the air. And then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. It's it's incredible. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, this beware. Beware. And uh, beware of false teachers. Right? Beware deceivers. Right? And then check yourself, man. What is it that you believe in? There's no reason at all to look at the scripture and say, well, some people say this and some people say... You can know the truth. You can know with absolute certainty the truth. If you seek it. If you seek it. And I, you know, I'd like to have that conversation with people too, but uh, I wonder, is anybody out there, anybody out there care about the truth anymore? What's, I mean, really, what's more important than the truth? 